What's up everybody? Today we're gonna figure out if my M1 MacBook Air can beat my PC build in a rendering slash exporting test. We're gonna see. Question of the day, which one do you think is gonna win? Before we get started, let's talk about the specs. So for my custom built PC, I have a Ryzen 9 3950X. Now this is 16 cores with 32 threads. For the graphics card, I have an NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super and this is an MSI Ventus OC. So some specs that comes with that, it has 2,176 CUDA cores. It's got eight gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM and the memory speed is 14 gigabits per second. Also in this system, I have 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM, and then I got two SSDs and one hard drive. So it's very customizable with the storage. So in the MacBook Air, there is an M1 chip in it, and this is Apple's newest CPU. It's made in-house and it's eight cores. And specifically on my version, they actually have a dedicated GPU in there too, which is seven cores. And then inside, there's also a 16 core neural engine. So with the memory in there, I actually upgraded from eight gigabytes of RAM to have 16 gigabytes of RAM installed in there. And there is only one SSD, which has 256 gigabytes of storage. So really on the MacBook, there's not really much customization you can do to it besides when you do the initial build. And getting more storage or RAM actually adds, you know, a decent amount to the price that it originally cost. So obviously my custom PC is a little beefier. So we're gonna pull up Premiere on both computers like that. See, this is such a bigger screen compared to the, <laughs> compared to my MacBook. Well, there's one sign. You can see this open a little faster. So basically I just used one of my old videos of me playing Blade and Sorcery, the exact same project. So everything will be exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the components used in each system. All right, so one thing I did to be fair, I deleted the cache on both computers so that they can run, you know, just strictly from where it just started. I also don't want to screen record on any system so you can see how it actually acts. So first we're going to look at the MacBook Air. We're just going to scrub through. So this is at full quality on the playbacks. So we're going to see how that plays with that. You can see as I scroll through, honestly, I'm pretty surprised with this. I don't have much lag or anything when scrolling through, um, especially for a laptop. This is very impressive. So it scrubs through just fine. Now let's go to the main system. You can see it's also at full quality for the playback. I'm gonna scrub through. Again, pretty smooth. So the video itself is 4K footage um, right here with what I was recording myself with. And then on the screenplay, it's about, I think 1080p. I don't think it's more than that. Now, you know, we just have a couple audio clips, nothing too fancy. I had to rearrange the audio a lot because sometimes the audio gets out of sync on the Oculus Quest 2. And I have an adjustment layer for editing the color correction for this clip where I'm actually using my Oculus. So everything's exactly the same. You know, both did a pretty good job on just a random scrubbing test. Just a quick thing. I am not like a huge super edit person. So like, I'm just, casually using this. I have 4K footage, which I'm filming on this, and sometimes on my Lumix G7, which I actually have back there. But yeah, my old laptop, it would take, you know, about four hours to export a video compared to when I got this system, I exported one of the same videos in four minutes. And pretty much, I just wanted to get a laptop that can integrate well with my Apple ecosystem, you know, with my iPhone. Cause I think it's just a good personal laptop, especially if you have Apple products. So that's one of the main reasons I bought it. I didn't really buy it for editing, but I kind of spec'd it out a little bit by upgrading the RAM, just in case I wanted to edit on this computer, it should be able to handle it too. Okay, so pretty much I'm just gonna jump straight to the export. I don't wanna make y'all wait too long. So we're gonna go export media. I'm gonna do H.264 high bit rate, just match the source. Same thing here, file, export media, H.264 match source high bit rate. All right, y'all, so I'm hovered over both. We're gonna do click. So let's see, MacBook Air, sorry around 40 minutes or so. It's going down though. This is at five minutes. You know, not too bad. This is climbing down pretty fast, but um, you know, so far it looks like my actual PC with, you know, a whole dedicated graphics card, pretty high end CPU with this giant cooler that I put the cooler on upside down for. This one has 32 gigs of RAM. This has 16 gigs of RAM. But yeah, so far for this one, we're looking at four minutes for this one we have about 19 minutes left so obviously as i hoped i hope this one would be better you know because i paid two thousand five hundred dollars for this and this was a little less than one thousand pretty much 
But honestly, this is putting up pretty good competition. This was just a simple video, you know, for just testing it out on. Nothing too crazy. I didn't have any crazy edits or anything. But yeah, don't leave it. I'm just gonna have the export continue going. We're gonna see which one actually finishes first because who knows, the, the M1 might just boost up out of nowhere. And then we're also gonna do a Cinebench test just to see like benchmarks of, you know, how it compares as an overall system. But honestly, at the end of the day, you know, I don't really care which one's faster because I own both. It's just nice to have, you know, one that I can edit on the go. You can see it's not completely horrible compared to this PC. But whenever I want to have, you know, just a fast edit and export and just be able to rely on the system, I'm going to go with the PC, obviously, but I'm going to be locked into this desk area or wherever I put it. But the laptop for the M1 MacBook, I can literally just go anywhere. All right, and as you can see, we're wrapping up on this one with about 10 seconds left, and we still have 14 minutes on the M1 MacBook Air. So this one, three seconds left. Boop. And this one obviously beats the M1 MacBook Air. But I gotta say, this is still pretty impressive for, you know, just a personal laptop. So we're done with this. It still has about 14 minutes or so. So next, as promised, we're gonna do a Cinebench test on both systems. So I went ahead and downloaded both and opened Cinebench on both systems. Yes, I accept it. Now you can see some of the specs here. We got an Apple M1 with a eight core CPU. And then like I mentioned before, we got the Ryzen 9 3950X, which is a 16 core processor. So yeah, we're just gonna compare these. We're gonna do the multi-core test and see how that goes. Okay, and now we're hovering over both and we're going to press them. And then let's just see how that goes. So it's a 10 minute render for each, I believe, based on what I'm seeing. So you can see here, it's like generating that image, doing its stuff. Um, but I'm pretty much probably gonna fast forward through this because we won't see the results until it's done. All right, now we got about 10 seconds left on each one. Then we're gonna see the results. This has to finish the picture, I believe. All right, so my PC is finished. If you look here, it's the one highlighted in orange and the light orange. So we got a score of 22,657. So that's actually higher than one of my previous tests. And now we're just waiting on the MacBook to finish. So for this, we got a whopping 6,746 points. And honestly, that would make sense because this has double the amount of cores uh, in my PC compared to the M1. So again, we can see 22,657 compared to 6,746. And that sums up our little friendly test. So like before I was pretty confident that um, my PC would destroy it. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, wait, the M1 is actually like pretty good. And it might stack up to it more than I actually thought. And I still think it put up a good competition. So my PC that I custom built is clearly better. Now I would hope so. I spent $2,500 on that compared to around a thousand that I spent on the MacBook M1 Air. But yeah, like I mentioned before, you know, I pretty much like my PC as a power station and I mainly use my M1 as a personal computer. I really don't do too much editing, but you know, whenever I need to, I'm able to do it on there. So you can view any of my PC parts that are linked in the description below. You can even pick up the link to the MacBook M1 Air, but just know I upgraded it to 16 gigs of RAM. I think the default is eight gigabytes of RAM. And then, you know, just some other things to think about with a laptop like this, you're kind of stuck with the storage on it unless you get external storage. So for this on my PC, I have two NVMe SSDs and then a hard drive. So I can, you know, pretty much build this computer any way I want to. I really like the customization on this, but I feel kind of locked in on Apple. But being an Apple user myself, it kind of just works out in the long run with being able to, you know, airdrop to the computer, FaceTime, text on there. It has its benefits. But yeah, that's going to wrap up the video. Thanks so much for watching. You know, I just thought this would be a fun test. I'll see y'all in the next one. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notifications if you want to see more videos like this. Otherwise than that, peace. I'm glad I have both systems.